Hey everybody, what's going on? Eric here. How the hell are ya? Welcome back to my channel. Welcome to my channel if you're new. Hope you guys are doing good. I am doing just great. Today we are working on the Guitar World's Kit Guitar. Did I say that right? Guitar Kit World. Sorry. It's been a long time since I've said that we're, uh, mentioned the name. So, anyways, you saw the beginning of the video. You've seen how the epoxy laid out. You've also seen a few things in the epoxy that really shouldn't be there right now, especially the tailpiece mounts, bridge mounts, and I got a couple of drills or a few drills where the holes are that where the neck is going to mount to the body of the guitar. So I know where those holes are when I need to re-drill them to put the neck back on there or put the neck on the guitar. Anyways, I've got a few questions, a few emails that uh, people are having a hard time with their epoxy that they're doing a project with or applying it to a guitar, mostly applying it to a guitar. So I want to try to explain some stuff. Maybe this will help you guys out. Hopefully it does. Epoxy on wood is kind of a real difficult thing because of the fact that there are some pores in the body or in the wood uh, on a guitar, on a table, countertop, whatever. Now, the problem with it is, is those pores, some of them are kind of wide. And as you pour the epoxy over whatever type of a dye that you put on the wood or however you stained it, remember you want to stay away from oil-based stains when you're doing any type of epoxy resin over your project because the epoxy resin does not like oil-based stains, okay? So you want either alcohol or water. So what happens when you do the pour and you start getting all these bubbles? Well, some of the bubbles is already in the epoxy due to mixing, but some of the bubbles are coming from the pores of the wood, which mean air, it, the epoxy is going in as air is coming out. Slowly, that's why you don't see the bubbles right away and all of a sudden they start popping up because the epoxy is slowly sleeping into that pore. And they are a pain in the ass. So what helps with that is a torch is one thing. Now this is a medium. Uh, I would go with the gray bottle which is a lot lower. It's not as hot as this one is. This is a medium so it's going to be a little bit more hotter. So you really can't sit in one spot too long with that because it'll end up doing a thing where it'll heat up the epoxy and actually uh, make a ripple and you don't want that and it'll cause more problems. So you gotta work pretty fast if you're using a hot propane torch. Now also what works pretty good are these little bitty lighters, which you can refill these if you want to. They're just like a torch. They come out just like a torch. They're not as hot. They work just as well. And you can get a little bit closer to the project with it without touching the epoxy if you're afraid to use, you know, something like a torch, which you do have to be careful. Make sure you keep some type of a flame extinguisher, you know, someplace close by, just in case there might be a little bit of a problem. You know, just because the epoxy resin is not flammable doesn't mean anything else around it isn't. So what happens is, is the pores are kind of letting air escape from the wood and what happens is you start getting bubbles. Now another problem is, is that if you stained or dyed the wood and the wood is still wet, okay, uh, that's going to cause problems with bubbles as well. So you want to make sure that your project, your finish on your project as far as a dye or stain goes, is completely dry before you apply epoxy to it because it's going to end up making bubbles and that's that part there is a real nightmare. Take it from me. I know. I've been playing with this for a while now and I've been kind of doing things here and there to test things out to see how this is going to work out before I apply it and uh, I've learned a lot from using the epoxy resins. It's very durable. It's almost bulletproof and uh, yeah it makes for a great shiny glass like finish as you can see on the projects that I worked on before. Now if you want to help out uh, closing up those gaps or those pores that are in the wood, go with like a 400 grit sandpaper, okay? If you do like a dye job on it and you want to do, you know, sand it down a little bit uh, before putting the epoxy resin, well just be careful you don't sand off the dyes that you put on the wood. Sand the wood first with the 400 grit sandpaper. Try to seal up as much as the pores as possible. Sometimes the uh, finer dust from the uh, sandpaper you know, the wood dust will get into those pores and seal them off as well. 
So that kind of works out for you. But be careful with your finish because you don't want to lose whatever color you put on there unless you're doing some type of a burst where you want to dumb down the center more than the edges. So just keep that in mind. So sanding it with a 400 grit sandpaper is going to help out seal up some of those pores. Cause a seal to where you're not going to get as much bubbles coming through your finish. Now, another problem that some people were saying was like cross grain, you know, on the edge of the body of something. Yes, you can get bubbles coming out of the side. So you want to make sure with sanding, you want to sand the edges of your body really nice, just like you want to do the top and the bottom. Now, trying to plug up holes or trying to like seal up a hole or uh, that's already pre-drilled in the body but wanting to be able to see where that hole is so you can re-drill it at a later time well what I end up doing so I get a nice flat surface nice flat finish is I'll end up taping behind the holes otherwise the epoxy will go into the hole come out the other end and it forms kind of like a crater on the edges of the epoxy as it goes into the hole. And I'll show you a little bit of that. You can probably see it on these guys right here and I'll explain that to you a little bit. This is just, this is a little bit different but the same scenario. Now, what I like to do is if you know how to use a router and you have the templates to do so, this is kind of like, all right, you're, you're, you're making a guitar, you're finishing it off and stuff like that, but you still have to do the routing and route out the pockets for this, route out that. Yeah, okay. Doesn't make it very easy to do a nice finish uh, with your guitar using epoxy resins if you don't know how to use a router and tools because you gotta route these guys out. <laughs> they will fill up with epoxy and they can cause you a problem as far as trying to mount a pickup. You can't, there's no way, it's impossible. So a router is your choice. Get a router with a bearing bit on it, get some type of a template for your uh, pickup cavities. Same thing for your cavity on the back, unless you're really good with masking tape and you mask things off really well. Well, the problem with masking tape is, is when there is a hole, the epoxy runs and makes a kind of like an edge going down into the hole. When you use masking tape, it bunches up and goes up the masking tape. So you're still going to have to do some type of sanding or some finishing work. I'm trying to get away with not doing any at all. Now there is a little piece of dust somewhere over here that I saw and there is a little dent right over here and that's in the wood of the guitar itself. I probably could have sanded that out but uh, I missed it somehow. See, this is why you don't work really fast and you take your time on doing things. So another question is, is doing both sides of the guitar. You know, how do you do one side and then do the other side and have a nice seamless finish uh, without having any lines? I have a trick for that. It works out pretty good. I haven't ran into any troubles yet for having both sides done and having a nice seam, seamless finish and let me show you that now all right so we are looking at the side of the body of the guitar and i want to make sure that this is in focus and you can actually see what's going on here so here's the finish and here's my masking tape line all right so as the finish comes down it makes a hump over that line and then comes down the tape this is what i call my drip skirt if you remember in previous videos well what happens here is because it makes a hump well, there's a higher spot right over here. It's perfect for taking a razor blade. You know how I showed a long time ago how you scrape uh, runs and stuff down and get rid of them first with a uh, razor blade instead of having to sand your ass off. Well, what I'm gonna do is I'll take a piece of razor blade, put tape on both ends of the razor blade so it's protecting each end and then leaving the center of the razor blade open just like if I was taking and using it to scrape a, uh, a run down and same rules apply. I'm going to scrape this area once this fully cures and that's going to make this tape peel off like nothing and leave a nice nice straight flat line going across over here. So when I mask other than the end piece being over here this is one piece of masking tape going all the way around the body. Alright there are no cuts in it 
and it works out to where it makes a really good seal between the epoxy and the body. But you want to make sure you use good uh, masking tape because the epoxy as it heats up and cures can lift the tape. So don't pull the tape or stretch it. Just let it lay and flatten out and use your fingernail to kind of scrape it around the edges to make a nice seal. So when I peel this off, there should be no excess epoxy underneath this tape whatsoever. Yeah, I know. It seems like it's a lot of work to do this, but if you want to have a real nice finish, that's basically how you do it, other than dipping it in epoxy and pulling it back out. Otherwise, you're still going to have runs, drips, and everything else that cure that you're going to have to take care of. And I don't know how that would work out with this guitar when, you know, you'll see shit just going down the sides, around the edges, or whatever. It's a little bit difficult. So the back of this thing has been sanded down, and it's been level sanded so what I got to do is put another coat of epoxy on this after I remove this tape now when I mean getting a nice seam that tape line that's going to be around the edge is going to get tape going this way now it's going to be going this direction instead of down and this will be flipped over so my drip skirt will be facing down again and just exposing that little line that the tape made from pouring the top that's going to give me a nice bond when the two meet each other no bubbles as long as the tape is really good tape uh, and you're careful with the torch going around it to get rid of those bubbles and uh, you might have a little bit of sanding and a little bit of polishing to do at the end it's a seamless look so that's how I've been doing this now if you notice that you know well I got these guys in here and uh, yeah why did I do that well I wanted to save the holes for, so I know where to drill these guys out so when I put the uh, hardware on here I'm not going to have a problem now this side over here these are drill bits a little bit of the different size but that's okay because uh, they're still somewhat close to the exact size of the hole and uh, I know exactly where those holes are going to be the other side is sealed I plugged the, the other side up so no epoxy resin can go on the other side and make a drip or if I pour the back it's not going to come out this side and make a drip or even fill up the hole still so why do I have those there well I just said so I know where the holes are going to be so when I put my neck on here all I have to do is redrill them out I know exactly where they got to go I could put the uh, neck plate on the back of here or on the front of here and I can actually see exactly where to drill how to drill and then proceed to drill so how did I get these things in here without sealing them in the epoxy good question well wax any type of an automobile wax whether it's a paste or a liquid if it's a liquid rub it on the end of your drill bit or whatever you want to put into the finish uh, make sure you go up you know, don't sit there and just put it on a little part, bit of it, but do the whole side of it. That way, if any epoxy does touch and go up the edges of the uh, whatever you stuck in the uh, epoxy before pouring it, it doesn't go up it and stick to it that way. Wax and epoxy don't mix. That's why I could peel wax off of this or epoxy off of this wax paper. It doesn't like it. It doesn't stick. Automotive wax works just as good. Now this is a this is an egg mold for epoxy. Okay, now this is made with like a silicone rubber. Uh, it can absorb the heat that the epoxy makes without deforming itself or having any other problems. That wax is that. Sorry, I keep saying wax. That mold has got a coating of something on there that almost feels like it, it's a wax. Okay, it keeps the epoxy from sticking to it. They also have for if you're doing jewelry or any type of other molds that you're making epoxy stuff with um, There is an epoxy mold that you can use and Basically just peels right off the epoxy leaving a nice smooth surface for you to either fans, uh, sand and finish or just leave as is now What I ended up doing is I put some wax around the bottom of the drill bits This keeps me from having to break the drill bit and having now to drill out the drill bit or having other any problems getting these drill bits out of the epoxy resin it should be fairly easy to do so what i do is i kind of give them a little bit of a squeeze from side to side if you hear like a little bit of a crack that means there might have been a little bit of the epoxy resin stuck to the uh, drill itself and uh, it's releasing itself so i should be able to either use a pair of pliers or just by hand 
pulling them out. Yeah, perfect. And you can hear the little suction that it makes pulling those things out. So they were in there. So now I know exactly where my neck plate's gotta go. And I know exactly where the holes on that neck plate are gonna meet up when I put it on here to drill. For these guys here, the reason why I did this is I wanted to make sure I knew exactly where the holes were for the bridge and the tailpiece. Because if you're doing this like, uh, say trying to eyeball and find center of these holes, you might screw up. This makes it a lot easier to find these holes and re-drill them out if you need to. So what I've got here, the screw for the bridge that goes into the sleeve, and these are some magnets. They're just cylinder magnets. So if I put them together, I can make them in any length that I want. If I mount it to the bottom of the screw, now I just made the screw, extended it, and made it longer. Now if I stick it in the hole over here and start turning it with the wax that's already on the pieces, these should come out right out. So I'll start turning it until it hits bottom. It's a little tight, but the sleeve comes right out because I got wet. You can kind of see the wax that's on there. Now I'll also do this for basically all of the parts that I stick inside of the body. So it gets a little tight and you can feel it loosen up. It comes right out. Now these holes were drilled kind of deep, which I don't usually drill them that deep when I do. When I Put a, um, out a, a tram or something. I'll basically make the hole about the same length as the sleeve as long as the screw doesn't come out the other end. If the screw comes out the other end, well then I have to fix that. So I already got this one out. It was fairly easy. So I need to get this one out. So again, I will put, I think these were shorter, drilled shorter. So I'm going to stick that in there. I should be touching bottom. I'm touching bottom right now. That's where it stops. So if I start turning it, it comes right up. There you go. Pretty simple. And you're not ruining any of your sleeves. The wax that's on here comes off. So it's not a big deal. Now you're left with, you know, the holes. You need to finish them. Now, the one thing that this did, which I'm, I kind of like, and if you noticed it in the video, where the uh, sleeves were, you can see the epoxy kind of goes down and then came up the sleeve a little bit. Did the same thing, left about the same size ring around each one of these. I'm leaving that in here, okay? I like the way that looked, that actually looked pretty good. And also it gives me a little bit to where that I know I could put that sleeve further down than what the neck is gonna be so I can get my action height and my tailpiece and everything else where I want and how I want without having any problems. So now I am left with a lip going around each one of these. Well, good way to take care of that. Counter seat a bit. That will go around the edges of that and get rid of it and you will never see it, it'll be gone. I won't have to scrape it, I won't have to sand it, I won't have to do anything with it because the lip that goes around the sleeves at the top where you sit on top of the body will hide that little chamfer that that uh, countersink bit made. So let's look at the back of this thing so I can show you a little bit. This is gonna be a little bit hard because this, even though I can touch this and this is not tacky and stuff, it's still not 100% cured because I poured it last night around this time. But I can touch it and it's pretty good. So like I said, bubbles are and can be a pain in the ass. So I have the back of it sanded down really nice and I got like a little bit right here of bubbles that came through. And well, and there's one right over here and there's one right over here. Now, when I do my last pour on this, all that will be gone. I won't see it. And then you can see here, I took some racer pieces and stuck them inside the holes so I can kind of see and plug them up so no epoxy resins. But as you can see, this is pretty nice and flat. I am gonna to have to route out this chamber over here. Not a big deal. But other than that, yeah, this thing will be a nice guitar when I'm done. Now, right there, there's a piece of metal. So I wanna make sure I don't rub that off. I wanna pick it off with my fingertips because it'll stick to my finger without scratching the finish. 
That's probably from the sleeve or the screw or whatever when I stacked it and to pull those sleeves out. So I am going to have to reroute this once I get the bridge in place and everything else routed and all the epoxy is done I am going to have to uh, measure to see basically how far down the neck has got to go and clear the bridge be a little bit above it you know bridge all the way down that way I have room for adjustment. So that's basically what I've been up to in between proj other projects so I still have a couple more guitars that are coming in that uh, uh, hopefully they come in soon that I got to work on and I have a couple guitars that I have to ship out that I ended up selling so yeah so I sold uh, what was it five guitars six guitars I sold six guitars that I've got did pretty damn good on them I'm um, pretty proud of that and got really good feedback on the ones that I ended up doing uh, all the work myself on them and the ones that were kick guitars that I finished and put together. So I kind of like that and uh, yeah, I'm going to continue to do what I'm doing and uh, see where it goes from there. So far so good. So right now I need to put some drill bits away, put some other parts away, some pieces away and uh, let this thing finish curing up. I probably should wait. I probably should wait at least three days but considering that you know this is probably not as thick as what's on the body and it's pretty hard to flex and I can't scratch it with my fingernail or put my fingernail in the finish so it's curing and it's curing up pretty nicely but again don't want to rush your project because you end up making mistakes so that's what I'm not doing you guys take it easy have a good one and I will catch up with you all later